Hi, everyone. We are coming at you live from the care group, and we are here today to chat about fluoroquinolone toxicity. Um, before we get started, I'm going to have a brief introduction of Dr. Guillory. Um, Dr. Guillory is local to Aurora, Colorado, and he has been in practice for 33 years now. And he started out as a general internist and started to migrate more towards functional medicine. Um, he had a particular interest in gut health and started to build his practice around that. And today we're gonna sit here and talk a little bit about fluoroquinolone toxicity. And if you don't know, fluoroquinolones are a class of antibiotics that include um, Cipro, Levaquin. Um, and if you're looking for what they all are, um, you can go ahead and download in the link in our comments. We have all of the side effects of fluoroquinolones, what they're prescribed for, and also what medications um, fall under that class. So Dr. Guillory, why don't you tell us a little bit about what got you interested in writing your most recent blog post? Well, I've always told the uh, students in the office, Lauren, uh, that every uh, patient side effect, or I'm sorry, every patient complaint is a medication side effect until proven otherwise. So if someone presents with headache or diarrhea or skin rash, always think medication side effect. And that holds out to be true a lot of times. If you're a patient out there and you develop some new symptom, think about did it start when some new medication was started and think about medication side effect. So I've been interested in fluoroquinolone toxicity because I've had a couple patients who are totally disabled from this class of antibiotics that can adversely affect the tendons and connective tissue. That was the first thing that was described with these was Achilles tendon rupture, the Achilles tendons, the big tendon uh, behind your heel. And then it became uh, known that it can damage all the connective tissue in the body. And not only that, it can damage uh, the uh, nervous system. And so recently the FDA has put out these so-called black box warnings uh, uh, telling people about these uh, new, really bad adverse uh, effects. Interesting. Okay, we have a comment from Elaine that you are having issues hearing us. We are at 100% on our end, so we'll do the best we can. I'll try to scoot the laptop closer. All right, better. Great. So that's interesting, Dr. Guillory, and I've heard you say that a lot. Um, to your students that every patient complaint is a drug side effect until proven otherwise. Um, and tell us a little bit about how this particular storyline came up for you. Isn't it that your sister was complaining of something? Well, yes, I have a sister and a brother who both have been diagnosed with EDS hypermobility type, uh, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome is EDS. And I was interested in that both of them had been on fluoroquinolone antibiotics at some point and knowing that EDS is bad for the connective tissue and that these antibiotics can damage the connective tissue even further. That's what really got me on this path of looking to see uh, what all might be associated with fluoroquinolone uh, toxicity. In fact, there is this new disorder uh, described recently called fluoroquinolone associated disability syndrome or FADS. Now I've been in practice 33 years and I've seen some of these new kind of rare disorders come to the forefront or get on everyone's radar recently. So EDS would be one, another would be POT syndrome, which is postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, and then mast cell activation syndrome, which just described in 2007, and then small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Now, a lot of these different uh, disorders have overlapping symptoms. And if you look at each one in relationship to quinolone antibiotics, you can find some uh, evidence to suggest that there might be a correlation. And it, my thought is that all of these disorders might be related to fluoroquinolone toxicity. That's really interesting. And we, um, I would like to thank our entire community who has been really active on our Facebook page since we presented this subject. Um, it's been a very sensitive one for a lot of people, so many so many people have had their lives ruined by this um, antibiotic. And it's interesting because not only are we discussing fluoroquinolone toxicity and getting awareness out about that, but also our blog post um, really goes into something that is kind of a new discovery, which is what Dr. Guillory just touched on. And that's that 
fluoroquinolones might be an underlying cause of a lot of modern um, diseases, things that are popping up. Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit more about uh, your personal experience of EDS and how that's impacted your family? Well, I don't personally have uh, EDS, but a lot of EDS patients, about 65% have <clears throat> small intestinal bacterial uh, overgrowth or SIBO, which we treat a lot of because if I have an interest in uh, intestinal or digestive health. Now, it's interesting to me to note that the most common cause of small intestinal bacterial overgrowth is post food poisoning. So someone gets food poisoning and then they get small intestinal bacterial overgrowth is the most common uh, cause. There are a lot of other causes. Um, but a lot of these patients with food poisoning, I'm sure, end up getting treated with drugs like Cipro or one of the fluoroquinolones. So I'm wondering if it's not the treatment that's causing the SIBO as opposed to the infectious agent, whether it's Salmonella or Shigella or Campylobacter. So that's kind of one of the burning questions that I have. Is it the treatment or is it the bacterial infection? That makes sense. So tell us a little bit, I think you're being a little bit modest about um, what just happened. I'll tell you a little bit. Dr. Guillory was actually invited to Paris to give a group of doctors um, a talk about small intestinal and bacterial overgrowth. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience doing that? Yes, well, my <clears throat> sister who has uh, EDS is actually living in Paris now, and she's trying to create an international clinic to help patients like herself who have been disabled with this disorder. She has a network of EDS doctors in Paris that she has uh, become acquainted with, and she is one of the 65% of EDS patients that also has small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And when she started talking to her French doctors about that, they had never heard of uh, SIBO or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So I went to Paris to talk to these EDS doctors about small intestinal bacterial overgrowth because it occurs uh, pretty frequently in those patients. Interesting, interesting. So we have started to do a lot more um, kind of investigative content for the care group. And again, we are a private practice here in Aurora, Colorado with a focus on functional medicine. Um, and we've been overwhelmed with the outpouring of support that we've had over this topic. Um, a lot of people have been affected by fluoroquinolones and we are trying to get more information out there and start a community around that. Do you have anything else, Dr. Gallery? Well, you know, one thing I'd like to point out is that these drugs are very dangerous and the side effects can be permanent and it's not dose dependent. You could take one round of these antibiotics. Actually, we've heard from patients that took one or two capsules and ended up becoming permanently afflicted with connective tissue problems with the bones and the joints and also uh, their nervous system. So it's really, you know, something that we need to spread the word about. I, I personally think these antibiotics should be reserved for severe life-threatening infections where there isn't a safer uh, alternative. The last thing I would say is there's a gene called CYP1A2, which is a uh, gene that's responsible for metabolizing a lot of drugs like uh, the fluoroquinolones. And one theory I have is that patients who may be deficient in that gene get higher levels and they're the ones that are more predisposed to fluoroquinolone toxicity because obviously not everyone that takes a fluoroquinolone gets these terrible side effects. So the question I have is why is that? And we might be onto something uh, looking at this gene and seeing if there might be a correlation there. Great. Well, well thanks, Lauren. Thank you, Dr. Guillory. Thanks to everyone who joined us. Um, and again, we're gonna start doing more of this, trying to get um, in front of these topics that are a little bit difficult to handle. And if you have any questions, you can drop it in the comments. Um, we cannot give medical advice over Facebook, but we would like to create a community of support. And if you do have a medical question, we would be happy to help you. You can schedule an appointment by calling our office at 303-343. 3121. And we will catch you guys next time. If you want a full list of the side effects of fluoroquinolones, there is a download um, right in the comment. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in.